Welcome everyone. In this course, you are going to learn that how you can create ChatGPT using ChatGPT API with React. So first of all, in this course, you are going to learn basics of React and how you can create a React project. This is the output of our project or the course which we are going to learn here. So in this course, we are going to design a chat application kind of UI interface through which what we can do is we can write some question here, like as I write here, what is India? And when I hit enter or click on the search button, this data is going to get the data from the chat JPT API, right? And this is going to show us. So this is the output, final output of our course. But before uh, moving forward, we are going to learn this contents, right? That what is React.js, how we can create a React.js project and various things which are required to understand the basic understanding of how React works and how we can modify our code to achieve our goal. After understanding all these topics that what is React.js, how to create React.js project, what is the structure of the project folder, then components, JSX, virtual dome, React, the hooks, props, conditional rendering, and etc. After moving, after learning all those six topics about them, we are going to implement these things in practicals. And after that, we are going to get understand, going to get some understanding about what is ChatGPT, how to use ChatGPT APIs, and where to get the APIs keys and different kind of things which are required to create our project. So after understanding all these things, we are going to move forward where we are going to start doing the practical things where we are going to merge whatever we have learned in this course together and create a project or course or project like this, right? So I hope you understand the whole outcome of this course that what we are going to learn and what we are going to create. So we'll see you in the next lecture where we are going to discuss what is ReactJS and more. Thank you. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello and welcome everyone. In this course, you are going to learn how to integrate ChatGPT API with React. It's just a core concept of it. But before creating those projects, we are going to do, we are going to learn React. That what are React? What are the features of React and how we are going to build this application. We are going to start learning everything from the scratch. First, we we'll learn our React, React basics, which we are going to use for this project. And after that, we are going to learn how to integrate or how to get the API of the chat GPT and how to integrate with our React app. So the final result will be like this. We got a chat bot where we ask a question and that chatbot using ChatGPT API is going to give us answer. So let's have a look in real. So here I have created it, okay? So suppose if I ask some question, let's say, what is sun? Now what happened is this chatbot is getting of a text passing through the chat GPT server using APIs and going to get a answer from the chat GPT. Let's see. Okay. Right now it's taking time because there is a more load on the server of the chat GPT. And now you can see the answer. Answer is sun is a star at the center of the solar system and it's a large globe ball of gaze and everything, whatever it's written. So this is how we are going to create or we are going to learn that how to integrate or how to create our app, React app, and how to integrate that React app with ChatGPT API and ask this kind of questions. So see you. And I hope you are going to enjoy and learn so much things from this course. So see you in next lecture. Till then, take care and have a nice day.
Hello everyone. So let's begin our first part of our course series. So in this course, what we are going to learn is in the first part actually, that what is React. So we are going to cover the things which are required to create this project. And in this project, we are going to need React, right? Because in the first, uh, what we have to do is we have to create the UI, right? For our web pages. So user can interact with that particular web pages, right? So to create that web pages, we are going to create, we are going to use React.js, right? So let's understand what is React.js. So React.js is a JavaScript library user used for building user interface, which is also known as UI for web application. So generally it is created by Facebook and now maintained by the large community of developers. Generally, React allows us developers to create reusable UI components that can be combined to create complex web application. It uses a virtual dome, which is known as document object model, which will be rendered on our web browser, right? And due to this, uh, React helps us to efficiently update the UI without having to re-render the entire page. So this is a basic introduction of the React.js. In next lecture, we are going to learn that how we can create React.js project. So till then, take care and have a nice day. Welcome friends. So in this lecture, we are going to learn that how we can create React.js project, right? So these are the basic simple steps. First, you should have your system should have Node.js and NPM installed in your system. Second thing is that you have to create a React project using npx create react app and your project name. So let's understand how you can create it, right? So just open a folder where you have to create the project, right? Right, CMD, because I'm using Windows. So I am through this way, I'm going to create or open CMD or command prompt here, right? So in command prompt, you have to just write npx, npx create and dash react dash app. And after that, you have to write your project name. Suppose I'm just writing for your purposes demo. So what is going to happen in this case that react is created through this command lines, right? There are some codes which are going to be happened. Besides, there are some scripts which are going to run after hitting this. And it will take minimum two to three minutes of installations, right? And after that, what you will see is a folder created here. It's a demo, which is which the name which we have given during writing that particular command, npx create dash react app, right? After this, what was going to be happen is, you have to do one more step, which is starting the development server. And how you can start your development server is, just you have to move that particular directory or the project which you have given, right? So using cd, then project name, hit enter, and start npm, right? So you have to write npm start. We are going to see this all everything that how to run the React project, right? So here, this is taking some time because it is uh, installing some libraries which are required to run a React application, right? Till then, let's understand the folder structure which are required to understand that what folder structure React use. So generally, React has a basic folder structure, right? This is a basic folder structure. We always try to follow this structure as well as it's a depend on us that how we are going to structure our code, right? Or our project. For it actually depends on the type of project or the vast, how vast that project is, right? So just uh, there are some basic files or the folders which are actually required and uh, all always you will going to see any react project right so which is node modules so in node modules what happen is in suppose what happen is in our project directory these are some folders 
which are present okay so generally most important part is node modules right so node modules are the directory which contains all the dependencies which are required by our project right and you have the most important thing is that you don't need to edit anything in this directory because these are the packages or the we can say libraries which are required right so in this node modules all the dependencies which are required for the project are kept here right we never do anything inside that project inside that directory okay now the next one is public directory so in this directory it contains the public file that will be served by the web server right so in index.html file is the main html file for the application any static asset like image fonts can be placed here right so we generally what we do is this is the most important file it is the entry point this is this is going to be served by the web server on our web browser right understanding okay this file is going to be served and we are going to put everything which are which static things which we want to share or want to show during our project we are going to write it or paste it here okay now next thing is that src this is the most important right directory this contains the source code of our application this directory has some files like index.js right so this index.js file is what index.js file is the entry point of the application in this from this particular file the application starts next thing is that app.js so app.js is the main component that renders the ui so this is app.js is required or responsible for rendering the ui in upcoming lectures, we are going to understand each and everything in very deep. But right now, what we are doing is we are going to understand the structure right now. Okay. When we do practical things, you will going to understand each and every concept. What is index.js, what is app.js, and what are the things required, or what are the things written in these files, especially, right? Suppose you have uh, another file which is index.js. This file contains the global CSS. Okay. So whatever global CSS you want to apply in our project, we try to write it here in this particular file. Apart from this, we also have app.css. These contain the specific app component CSS, okay? Right? And the next one is, as you can see, you have this logo, FC logo. It's just a image file, right? This file is used to, uh, what we can say, to show the logo, right? And we can also, we always replace this file because React provides its default logo but we don't need that particular logo because our website has its own logo, right? So we always change that particular file. And the most part, important part is in SRC folder, we have another folder which is called components. And this component directory contains all the React component for our application, understood? So these are some basic structure, right? And apart from this, there are two more files are there, which are package.json. This package.json is used to maintain the metadata of our projects and its dependencies right generally what we do is whenever we uh, install any packages what happened is that in package.json it makes an entry right we got an entry of that particular package and its dependencies what are required for that particular package to run faster or smoother without any error and that particular package entries are written here and those those particular package is going to install or saved in this particular node module so we generally don't and uh, either we generally always never going to do or delete this package.json file because if we lost this package file, then we don't have any other way to get the dependencies what are required or what are what packages are used in this particular project, right? Okay. And the last one is readme file.md. This file is always contain what the instruction about the project or the information about the project. So these are the basic structure of that particular React project, okay? Now, let's go to the command prompt and let's see that our project or the NP, uh, what we can say, node or, or sorry, React is ready to serve us, right? So just what we have to do is, we have to write CD, our project name, which is demo, hit enter, and we are right now currently in the demo directory, right? And just we have to write npm start. When you hit enter, a project is going to create, a build is going to create, and our web browser is ready to serve you a file or a project which is created using React, right? 
So wait a minute and you will going to see the output. Generally what happens is, uh, it is always the React application opens on this particular port, which is localhost 3000, right? So this is the particular example that how you can create a React application using NPM and PX. We create React app, right? And this is a basic minimal application which is created. Okay, which React provide in this starting. So I hope you understand that structure and how you can create that particular React project. So see you soon in the next lecture where we are going to understand more about React and its core components. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Welcome back friends. So in last lecture, we understand that how we can create a React app or React application, and as, well, as well as we have understand that what are the project structure. Now let's have a look that what create, what kind of files or the structure that create React app script or that command has created for us, right? So let's have a look. So for opening that, I'm going to use terminal again, and I'm going to write code space dot so after pressing hit i'm going to get visual studio right so visual studio is getting opening on my system and here we are going to see the project structure which we have understand or which led last lecture right so as you can see here in last lecture we have uh, studied or we have uh, go through this part also right that what are node models right so node models are the directive which contains all the dependencies which are required for the project, right? So as you can see here, we have a folder known as node model, right? I'm going to increase the font size so you can see everything perfectly, right? So this is the node model. If I click on it, you are going to see multiple folder inside this and these folders are the dependencies, right? Which are having, which are required to create a React app. So these are the packages which are used to run or create a React app. So these are the packages which are going to store inside the node models. What else we have studied here is a public folder, right? So public directory is, contains the public file that will served by the web servers. So as you can see here, we also have a public directory which contains some public files like index.html, that icon, logo, right? And everything which are required here. So in public folder, what we can do is we place the static assets like image, fonts, right? Inside the public folder. Now the next thing is that SRC folder or the SRC directory. So let's have a look of SRC directory, how it looks. So in SRC directory, we have, we have multiple things or multiple files, right? First file is index.js. So this file is the entry point of that application. So we are going to see this, what are this, right? So this index.js file, which is opened here, is the entry point of what? Of our application. So what happened is basically, let's see that this is the most important method what react to dot create root. So what is going to happen? This create root is going to take a reference or the element using JavaScript, right? Which element is going to take whose, whose ID is root. And this element where it is get from, it gets from the index.html file, right? So here you can see in this file, you will find out a div having ID root. So whatever we are going to see on our web page is going to render through this HTML file, right? Which is index.html put inside the public folder, right? So its location is inside the public folder. So whatever, what happened is when the project going to be loaded, right? So first of all, this index file will open this load. When this load, it get the actually element or that particular div using this command and create a root. 
and in this inside this root everything is going to be rendered here so this part whatever we write inside these things are going to render on this particular html page and we are going to see the output like this which we are seeing now the question arises what are this what where this logo comes from right and what is src slash app js right so we have to understand this thing is that in index js we have seen this app right f and if you think that uh, we you never have heard of this kind of tag in html right so it's not a part of html it's the part of jsx or we can say it's a part of react so this app element is we are getting it from this particular path and this particular path is here we are getting this particular component from this fold or this file which is app.js so inside this app.js we have written the loop code whatever is happening or rendering over here, right? So for this particular logo, you can see where we are going to get it from. We are going to get it from the this particular image tag, right? Inside that we have written a logo, a path for that particular image. We have applied the CSS classes over here, but in React, we generally use what? We generally use class name to represent the class of the tag right so generally in html what happen is we if i have to put any style or any css on that particular component so i write what class right and in double quotes i write that particular class name but in react instead of using class attribute we are going to use class name attribute and inside that double quotes we have to write that class name simple and these are the things so what happen is everything is bind together and export it as you can see here we have written export default app so these particular app things are bind together exported as a component and this component has came here right we write it as a tag in react and whatever the written inside the app.js file is going is coming from there to here and from here it is going to the root id and where is the root id is defined in the html file so this thing is going to render whatever we are going to write here, right it's going to render but now the question arises why we are writing the html in, in .js extension right and how we can do it so it's the exam it's a feature of react that react use jsx we are in next lecture we are going to understand that what is jsx and how you can create it so generally in react everything is components right so we what we do is whenever we have to create an ui we always try to break it down into small small components by writing a functions right this kind of function and this kind of function will return a tag okay and everything inside that tag we are going to get as a html right so this is an example of a component and how it's going to it's a flow i have you understand the flow i hope you have in, understand the flow that how this react app is created or generated right where we are getting how we are getting the data suppose instead of editing here if i write learning sorry right and if i hit send save then you are going to see here and you refresh this page you are going to get something like this. Oh, we got some error. What kind of error we got it? Here. If I saved here or not. Okay. One thing is that I never run this project. So I have to run this project. And how I'm going to run this project is by writing npm start. So when I hit npm start, what is going to happen? This whole thing is going to run again, right? and you're going to see the output in fraction of seconds. So as you can see here, our page is loading because it's the first time when we do npm start, it takes some time. But after once it will be rendered, then if I change anything, let's see, you are seeing here, learning rate. If I change something more that it's my first class,
and save again, then you're going to see it, right? So this is the output which we are creating here, okay? So till then, take care and have a nice day. I hope you understand everything. If you have any doubt, please rewind the push this video again. Or if you have any doubt, you can ask me directly through our forum. Welcome back friends. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss that how we are can able to write those code which are possible, which makes possible to write HTML inside a JavaScript, right? So it's a feature of React. In last lecture, we have seen that whatever we are writing here on that particular app.js file, right? We are getting it on our browser, right? So how it is possible, right? And so question arises. So to understand this concept, we have to understand thing, a thing that Java React provide JSX syntax, right? So what JSX syntax means, let's understand it better way. So JSX is nothing but it's a JavaScript XML, okay? And this extension of JavaScript allows developer to write HTML-like code in their JavaScript file when working with React, right? And JSX is not a separate language, but a syntax extension that allows you to write markup code that looks similar to HTML inside your JavaScript code, right? So as you can see here, we have some JavaScript array, one JavaScript array, and in that array, we are performing a map method. And after a map method helps us to modify the array or iterate over it, right? So what we are doing is we are iterating over an array and in that particular map function, we are returning a ally list item right so what we are doing is we are here we are creating a list of numbers right so these kind of things are possible if you look in the code which we are which we are which is running right now so you can see here what we have done is we have created a function and this function returns a html thing right this html code and in this side the html code what we are doing is in that particular function, we are exporting that function, right? And exporting that function as a component. We are using that fun particular uh, function as a component. Now the question arises, what is component, right? So in next class, we are going to understand about that particular part. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about JSX. In last lecture, we have learned the theory part and see some output or code. Now let's see that how we can create JSX. Suppose I have this HTML page and I have to create a JSX file for this particular page, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two components and from those two components, I'm going to show you that how we can create multiple components and this is a basic example of it. So let me show you, this is the output of this page, right? As I have written here, the first line is in H1. So we are getting this bold and more bit and we can see the text size is increased. And the next line is written in P tag. That's why it's a normal line, right? It's a paragraph line. Now here, if I have to change this in a component, so what I am going to do is I'm going to create, as we have discussed in the folder structures series, that uh, how we to structure the folders, right? So in components, I'm going to create a file, which is like, let's say it's a heading component. And always remember that uh, the first letter of the component file is always starts with capital letter, okay? So here we have heading component, Okay, so let, let me write heading, okay, J, S, X. So it's our heading component. And apart from this, I'm going to create another component, which is paragraph component, okay? So para dot J, S, J, S, X, okay? Now our, we have created the component, just the files. But now what we have to do is we have to write the code for that. So to write the code for that, 
what I have to do is I have to create a function. Either it's an arrow function or a normal function. So let's start doing with an arrow function. Suppose if I have to create a component, so I'm going to write const. I'm going to write heading, which is the similar name of the file. I'm going to assign a function, which is an arrow function. And inside that arrow function, I'm going to write the things which are required to render. Oh, sorry. To render the particular uh, code in JSX or in functional component, we use return. Okay, so return keywords help us to return the particular JSX or the HTML part. So what is JSX if? So JSX means JavaScript XML and in J uh, using JSX, we can able to write our HTML inside JavaScript code, right? So I'm going to write it here. And now, uh, if I'm going to show you something, which is like this, if I create a H1 tag here, right? And if I write something, let's say, hello world. If I write hello world here, it, there we have no issue. But suppose if I use another tag here, like say P, and here I write, testing. Now, we are getting some errors right now. You can see it. The reason behind is that we have to use React fragment here. Whenever we have multiple components or multiple, what we will say, we can say multiple tags inside a component, then we have to wrap it around a fragment. So in React fragment, we just have to write this empty closing and opening tag. And this is in React is known as fragments, okay? So whenever we have multiple elements or multiple tags inside a component, so we have to wrap it inside this particular fragment, okay? Either you can use a div also, but fragments are recommended because extra divs create some more complex structure in the HTML loop, right? But the, instead of using fragment, we can have a simple looking structure or DOM LE, okay? Now, these are the whole part here. Now, suppose I have to render this particular part. How I'm going to do that? But before rendering, we have to export it. So we have to export default, this particular heading. So whenever I'm going to use or import this particular file, I'm going to get heading here, right? So here is where one component is completed. Now let me show you the part here. So here in app.js we are using chat, right? But now instead of using chat right now, we are going to um, do something like this. We are going to first, we need to import this thing. Import what? Import heading from the component inside heading and then we have to use the heading here. Now, our, uh, so we have successfully imported our heading component from the inside the component directories and using heading file. Now we are using this component. Now let me render or run the code. To run the uh, React code, we use npm, uh, or npm start, okay. NPM I is used to install the dependencies or the packages which we need. NPM start start the server, right? And gives us a local store, local host 3000 port to to or see our code here. It will take some time because we are creating the we are starting this thing. So it will take a little bit amount of time. And once it will really start, we are going to see a window in our web browser showing us something which we have written here in heading component. Let's wait how much time it's going to take, but generally this much, this doesn't take this much time, but you can skip the part. 
10 or 20 second error. Well, this web browser screen is loading, and after some times, you are going to see the output of it. So, our app is loaded right now, and you can see here we have got hello world in H1 and the testing in H2. Now, suppose I have to write this testing in another component, okay? So, how I'm going to do that? So, it's a task for you, you have to create a component in paragraph.js, okay? And write this thing. And you have to import that particular para.js in the app.js here, right? So see you in next lecture. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello, friends. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss that what is component, right? So in last lecture, we have seen that uh, what we're doing is we have created a function from inside that function, we have written an HTML code and that code, uh, that function returns that particular HTML code and that function is exported, right? From this file and imported in another file, right? And after importing that particular file or that function, we are using that function as a, tag right and this tag is we are referring that tag as a component so what is component let's understand so basically it's a feature of react first of all and what feature makes things possible let's let's understand or let's read right so in react.js a component is a reusable piece of ui means user interface that can be used to build the user interface of an web application Right. So you, what is this? Stuff? What we can say that whenever we have to create a user interface for our web application, we can use this particular component and this component is a piece, okay, a small piece of that particular UI. Now, the component can be part of an independent building block of web page. It's responsible for a specific part of that UI that can be nested inside other component to create more complexity, right? So generally what we have, what this thing is going to be, this line is going to tell us that uh, this component might be have independent or we can say this component may be have complex or what we can say nested inside other component to create some complex UIs. In upcoming lectures, we are going to create this kind of UIs so you will understand it better. Way. It's just a technical part, okay? Oh, sorry, theoretical part. In technical part, we are going to cover everything. So what is React? component can be classified into two types. So generally there are two types of components in React. First one is functional component and the second one is class component, as you can say. So right now what component we are seeing is a functional component, okay? So this component is functional component because we are creating this component using a React function or a JavaScript function. There are different ways to create a function which are class-based component. Okay, which gives us some extra functionalities because we have a life cycle available, life cycle methods are available there, right? Which we are going to cover in our upcoming lectures. Okay. Now the component can also have props, right? So what is component have? Component of props, which are the input values passed down from a parent component. Okay, so generally what component can also have is a props. Props means property. In next lecture, we are going to understand everything about props. So generally, I'm going to give you an example. Suppose I have to pass some data, okay? Suppose from index.js, I have to pass some data inside this component, okay? So if I write something here, okay, in different format, okay? So if I write something here, what is going to be happen? This data will go inside this app component, right? And we can able to get it here, okay? So in next lecture, we are going to understand. And after getting that particular uh, value, we can access or we can use that 
a value here inside whenever where whatever we want okay to show or display right so this is the props props cat of the actually oh sorry for that props also have uh, component also have props which are input values passed down from a parent component and this allows component to reuse with different data making them more versatile and reusable right so this props feature inside the component gives functionality or makes component reusable with different data and making them more versatile to use okay so as a programmer as a designer or as a react developer we always try to create our component more reusable right so we send some data and on the basis of that particular data we try to use that component as a part of reuse okay so we can more use we can reuse that particular component again and again and we don't need to create more line of codes or more components in our project right so these are now for the component right in next lecture we are going to discuss about props so till then take care and have a nice day hello everyone so in this lecture we are going to discuss about what is props so before discussing it let i will show you an example and you will find it that what is props right suppose i have to pass a data as we have discussed in last lecture okay, i have that i have to pass a data from this index.js file right to where i have to pass this data to index.js to file to app.js file okay so then how it is possible so first of all understand this that everything in react is a component right so we have created one component this is also a component which component app.js is a component so how to pass data using props and what is props so let me show you an example suppose i have created a uh, let's say title t whenever i write a uh, attribute inside what inside a component or a tag like a structure okay this is this app is looks like a tag right it's like a self closing tag but it's it's not a self closing tag in html it's a component in react right so when i write an attribute suppose title here and like if, if i pass this as a string okay assigning this title as a string what title let's say hello world right so what i have done is i have assigned an attribute i have created a attribute title and assigned a value hello world right if i save this now i have a, now i can get that particular title here or a string here right and if i print here let's say p tag okay inside that p if i write curly bracket and tag and write title then you can see here on the web browser that we got that particular string so this is the concept of props props means property so if i have to pass a data from one component to another component from here this file to this particular file then how i'm going to do that using props so it is a very easy way to share data from one component to another another component so let's understand what is prop so in react prop short for properties it's an object that allows data to be passed between components right props are used to pass data from parent component to child component a parent component can pass props down to its child component by including them as a attribute in a child component just expect right the child component can access that data passed through the props object and use it uh, in its rendering right so as you can see here that i have passed a data hello world as a props inside title and i am getting that particular data which is hello world in that function or in that component and i am using that and we are rendering that particular hello world if you change anything it will change here reflect the change here right so this is the concept of props in next lecture we are going to discuss more about react so till then take care and have a nice day
Hello everyone. So in last lecture, I have given you a task that you have to create a component and use that component or import that component in your main file, which is app.js. So I have created that particular part, right? Now let's learn next things, right? I hope you have done that particular part, which I have given to you. If you're not, then let's see. What you have to do is you have to just create another arrow function, right? Create a component. You have to return a XML part, which is a HTML part. This file is known as XML, right? And you have to export that particular function. And here in FJS, you have to do what? You have to just import that particular file, right? As we have seen here. And use this as a component. Now, suppose what I have to do is I have to do props passing, right? As in our lecture, we have understood that what is props? Props is a property which is passed from parent to child as an informal data, right? So suppose I have to share a data or a pass a data in this particular component heading or a paragraph. How I'm going to do that? For that particular reason, we have to do something like this. It's a syntax for that. Suppose I have to pass a data, a data. So I have to mention here as an attribute of this particular component, and I have to pass a value using equals to and curly bracket. So whatever I'm going to write here, it's going to pass inside this heading component as a value, as a props. So I'm going to write here whatever I'm going to show you. Let's say, hello, right? And inside this para, I'm again try going to pass a data, right? Using equals to and curly bracket. Welcome to the rules. Right. Now, when I save this particular part, you are going to see something on the window. But right now, you are going to see nothing change here. In window, there's still the part which we are seeing. Hello world and testing, right? Now, why this is coming to you here? Because we have to do some parts, some things here. What kind of things we have to do here is we have to write heading. Inside this heading component, we have to get that particular data which we are getting here from the FJs, right? And how we are going to get the data or the props? Simply, we have to write in the here. Uh, in this function, we have to write a curly bracket and write data. There's two ways to do Either we destructure those particular things which we are getting, which the props we are getting. So what we are doing is we are doing destructuring here. In the curly bracket, we have I have mentioned data, right? Next way we are going to see in para, okay? So this is one of the way to access the particular props which we are getting from the FJS here. Now I have to write in heading and instead of Hello world, which is a data which I have written here. I'm going to write data. Now, what is going to happen when I save this? You're going to see the output here. Hello developers, right? Now, the, what happened is I am passing a data or a props in this component heading using a way which we have to do always. So I have write data equals to curly bracket and whatever I have to send here. And now in in, in, in heading.js x, right? What I'm doing is I'm getting those particular data using the curly bracket inside, writing the date name of that particular props, which we have mentioned as a data and writing here. So through which, through this way, we are passing a data to this component. Now another way is what? Another way is para. I'm going to write it here. We generally do what props. We write here props and here, what we do, either there are multiple ways to do. The main way uh, people generally use is destructure those particular thing, which we have done here in this particular function parameter option. But here, people do like this. Let's say data equals to props. Now, what is going to be happened here is we are going to destructure this particular props, right? Now, next thing, instead of doing this, we can do one more thing is we can create a curly bracket here and inside this curly bracket we are going to write props dot data 
Okay, and when I save this thing, you are going to see the output. Hello, developers. Welcome to the course. So this is the way you can pass the data from one component to another component, right? And this is the concept of props. And these are the two ways to access the props, right? I'm going to give you the code here after the this lecture. You will analyze everything, whatever is going on here, right? So till then, take care and have a nice day. See you in next lecture. Hello, everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about React Hook. It is one of the most important topic uh, which are used while developing a React application. Uh, as we have discussed, right, uh, right now we are using functional based component, right? If I show you that particular code, right now we have understood that there are two kinds of uh, components in React. Uh, first one is a uh, functional component, which we are using. And second one is class-based component, right? So in functional based component to create some states, right? Suppose I have to save some value or to store some information regarding a component. So for that particular part, what I have to do is I have to create a state or a storage or a variable, right? To store that particular value. But in React, uh, we doesn't define a variable. We define a state and that particular state comes from a hook. So first of all, let's understand what is hook. And when we create our application, then we will understand everything. Okay. In our technical section. So in this section, uh, what I'm going to tell you, what is React hook? So React hook are the functions that allows developer to use state and other React feature in functional component, which are previously not available in class, which, okay, which are previously available in class component. So as we discussed that there are two kinds of component, functional component and class component. So generally class component have rich functionality uh, during the beginning of that of React. But in functional components are known as stateless component because they don't have uh, power to manage its own state. But uh, after introducing, introducing of hooks in React, this functional component become uh, more, uh, uh, what we can say more, uh, this component got some more features which are uh, useful to uh, useful during the web development. Okay, now so hooks provides a way to reuse the stateful logic without having to use classes component, which makes code easier to read and maintain. So generally, what happened is after the introduction of hook, we got some uh, power that we can re. Uh, we can create our functional component in a way that we can reuse that particular uh, component again and again for different different kind of logics, right? Now, what are the React hooks? Uh, means we can say there are some uh, several built-in hooks which Reacts provide. Are first one is use state. So what use state does is using use state uh, allows us to allows component to manage a state variable. Okay, so whenever we uh, have to manage some variables or state inside a component, we are going to use use state. The next one is use effect. So use effect allows component to perform side effect, such as fetching data or updating the tool. So using whenever if we have to fetch some data through an API, or I have to perform some, uh, what we can say, some updation in the room, okay, or in the front uh, side of the website. So what I'm going to use is use effect. What is callback, right? So uh, one question arises here that what are these things? How I'm going to use that, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. It's just a theoretical part. In practical part, we are going to understand each and every line, okay? So don't think more about it. Just understand the concept, what are hooks and what are the types of hooks available in the React. Uh, now, if we talk about use callback, so callback allows component to memorize functions and prevent unnecessary rendering. So callback, basically, what is the callback thing is, it is used to memorize the function. Suppose if I have multi, I have a complex function which takes so many resources or memory consumption, right? So instead of uh, for particular same parameters, I'm not wanted to execute that function again and again for the same parameter. So what I do is I use callback. So if the parameters are same, we this, uh, component is not going to re-render. It just give us that particular answer or output, okay? Now, next come is use memo. So what is use memo? 
it's also similar like similar like use called like okay so use memo allows con component to memorize the expensive computation and prevent unnecessary rendering okay so in this case particularly what we have memorized is the value the function which returns the value we are going to memorize that particular part okay the second next one is use ref so use ref uh, allows component to access the underlying dome uh, node from a component so whenever if i have to directly access that particular dome or the element in the component or that particular dome structure then i'm going to use use ref right and say next one is use reducer so it allows component to manage states with reducer function similar how redux works so redux is a different topic in like separate topics uh, which are generally used in react application but in uh, after if we need that particular part then we are going to discuss more about it about redux right but reducer kya karta hai reducer will help us to allow component to manage states okay similar kind of things which we used in use state right now after all those things i hope you understand the basic understanding of hook when we do practical things i'm going to repeat those particular hooks which are most used right which are use state and use effect so for this particular lecture We are going to stop. Okay. If you have any doubt, you can ask me through the chat, or otherwise you can also. If you have some doubts, you have to search on this particular thing by yourself, right? Because uh, self study helps you to do better. Okay. So till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this lecture. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about hooks. If someone asks you what is hooks, you can easily say hooks are some things which gives extra functionality to the functional components right now let's understand some hooks as you have seen in the last lecture that we are discussing that there are several kind of hooks available for that functional component right the most used functional uh, hook in uh, in functional component is use state so now let's import that particular hook and use it so where to use and how to use it the simply you need to import use state from react and use it here so before using it we have to create a use state and for the for that particular thing we have to create a const array and write value set value and assign these things a use state so now what happen is going to be happened here is this is the syntax for the use state and where we have to write something like this so use state we have to define it here in this we can give initial value suppose i have to give initial value of 10 now what is going to happen is that whenever we are going to use this value you are going to get 10 if you want to see let i will tell see uh, let me show you right so again i am going to do nothing i am going to create a p tag oh sorry for that inside the tree there i'm going to use curly bracket and write value after saying that you can see here we are going to get 10 right you are seeing that now if i if i have to change the value of 10 then for that particular way is we have to call this function and pass the new value inside this right suppose if i have to call this function how i'm going to call this function i'm going to create a button okay so this button is looks something like this inside this button i am going to call an event which is on click event and inside this event i am going to call the function the setter function which is set value right inside that set value i am going to write a new value so now and uh, let me assign it 20 so whenever i am going to call this thing which is i'm going to 
hit this button. Let's say change. Okay, I'm given a name of the button is change. Now what is going to happen when I click here? You can see value is changed, right? Now let me do something more interesting and which you will enjoy. So right now what I have done is I have created another thing is and uh, let me write some classes here. You have to understand one more thing is that in JSX, whenever we write class of any tag, we generally use class name because class is a reserve word in JavaScript. So we have to write class name instead of class in HTML attribute, right? So suppose if I write here, display, which is a bootstrap class, right? Let me see it's working here, okay? And instead of changing, let me write here, minus, and here, uh, some, okay? Now what is going to happen here is, when I click on click, the value is going to be decreased, okay, by one. And the same thing we are going to do is, when I hit plus button or addition button, we are going to get plus one value. Now, see here, when I refresh this, the initial value of this particular value or state is 10, right? Now, when I hit on minus, we are going to get minus value, right? One by one, if I add one. So this is called use state, okay? And it is used to store a value of a component or manage the state of a component. So whenever you have to store a data or a value or manage a state of a particular component using this, you are going to do this, right? You can also pass these values inside, inside where? Inside components, right? Suppose I have to pass this component or value inside where? Inside this heading tag. So how I'm going to do this? Simple, I'm going to create another attribute called value. I can name anything, whatever I want. But to understand things, I'm going to write the same thing as a state, okay? So what is going to happen? We are going to get this value attribute or this value props inside where? Inside here, in this component. And so apart from data, we are going to get again a value here. And for that, I'm going to write this code, cut this code from here and pass it over there. So through this, we can show, I can show you that how we are going to pass the value or the states from uh, parent component to child component, right? So here is our again, the state is, let me refresh and start doing this. Now you can see it's working, right? So this is how we can do state sharing, which is known as prop sharing, right? Or data sharing between components. So see you in next lecture. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello, everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about next hook, which is use effect hook. This is the most uh, popular hook, which is generally used every time in every React project, because uh, as we discussed in last video, that what we uh, use effect do is perform side effects, right? So generally, whatever, whenever we have to fetch some data from the backend or the from another API, right, from the server using API, then we use this use effect. Okay, so now we are going to create a use effect and fetch some data from the APIs and we're going to render the data on our page, right? So for that particular thing, I'm going to create another component, which is just a normal card because I'm going to create a card here. Okay, so in this component, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open I'm going to create a component const card. Inside this component, we are going to do two things. First thing is that we are going to fetch the API, fetch the data from the API. 
and going to render some cards okay and i'm going to do everything in this particular component so for that i'm going to import use effect use effect from react okay and in this component i have to create something for return some HTML part which we are going to show us, which we are going to give us a good uh, view or UI. Okay. So for that, I'm going to use Bootstrap for some uh, four classes. Okay, and then in this container, we are going to create this container. Have some padding of pixels and then we are going to create some rows over here what call okay we are going to call this call again and again which is call of three inside this i have to create a card here so i'm going to get the uh, design or the html so I'm taking the HTML code from this particular W3 site here and using it here. As you all remember, what thing we have to remember is that uh, whenever we are using HTML code in JSX, what do we have to do is we have to do something which is called, okay, let me do it with my hand only. Okay. First thing is that we have to change the name of the class, right? Because in React, we use class name instead of class, right? So first of all, we have to find it here and change this class from class name. Okay. Now everything is fine. Okay. Now let me show the output see the output what we have to do is i'm going to remove everything whatever we have done till now or comment it out because i want to show you this data so for that i'm going to import card and use card here use this component pre import from where component inside that component we have card. One thing we have, should have to do is we have created a function, but we have not exported this card. Okay, so we have to export it this card. Export this card. Okay, to export this card. We write what export default right and. This we can export this particular card. Now, when I save this and when I save this also, we are going to see some output. Oops, we got an issue. What issue we are going to face here is style attribute. Whenever uh, you have to uh, know this rule, okay, that whenever we are using style in React component, JSX, we have to use, we have to pass this style as an object. Currently, we are giving this style as we are assigning this value in form of string, right? But in React, it's not a good way. It creates an error. The best way is to create a object here, okay? In key value pair, we have to pass the value in key value pair. Right? Again, save and then see, right? So this is some kind of a card which we are going to see in the which we are going to create. Now we have to get some data from the API and this is the in API, right? Which provides us some dummy JSON data, okay? So this is our API and I'm going to use this API. So for this particular API, before we use this particular API, we have to import another thing, which is Axios. What is Axios is? Axios is a, is a third party library, 
using this axios we can ex uh, we can get the data from the from an api or a backend so i'm going to write our use effect here inside use effect i have to pass a function inside this function what i'm going to do is i'm going to write axios axios dot get inside this gate i have to pass the api data and then write then block this then is going to get a response from the api and this response we are going to see okay or use it suppose i'm just going to console the response right now because let us check what response we are getting right and inside the if we got some error then what we have to do is we are going to write catch block here this catch block what will this catch block will do if we got an error we are going to get that particular error that why we are not getting the data from this particular api okay. we are going to get we are going to print it now let's suppose i'm going to run this okay save i'm going to save this thing i'm going to run the code okay. Okay, code is executed. Let me check in the console. So in console, you can see we got a response here. Inside this response, we have so many things, right? But where is our data? So we are getting the data inside a label called data. Inside that data, we have this thing, okay? Our product details, everything. So we are going to use this particular data to render everything, whatever we are going to see here. Right, so you are going to learn that how to render a uh, multiple, how to get the data from the API and then how to render data from it, right? So I'm again going to check here because we are going to get data in rs.data, right? I'm again going to refresh this thing. Yeah, so we are getting the product data here. Inside data, we have another label called product and inside the product we are going to get an array products okay dot products now what we are going to do is we are going to save this data okay whenever you have to save a data of a inside a component what you are going to use is you are going to use so what you are going to use is use state right it's a hook so we have to import that particular thing here also right so we have imported use state we have we have to create use state here so use state okay we got the use state snippet then we are going to get data API data, right? So initially, this API data is an empty array. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to get the data inside it. Okay. We have to set this data. So set API data again. Inside that, we have to cut this thing and press it. Now, the, what is going to happen? Whatever data we are going to get from this API, it's going to be set inside this state, right? Now, to access this particular data, what we are getting here, we are going to use this value or variable, which is API data, right? Now, this API data, how we are going to get this? Now, we are going to learn the major, most important concept of React, right? How to render things, multiple things in a common, right? So, we are going to use map method. As we know that map is a method of an array, right? Okay, and we have seen that whenever we are hitting this data, or sorry, API, we are going to get an array of objects, which is JSON, right? So now what we are going to do is, we are going to write here something. Okay, and one more thing is that whenever we have to write JavaScript thing inside the HTML, we use curly bracket again, right? 
So when you have to write some JavaScript logic inside your HTML, then what we are going to do is we are going to write curly bracket. And here we are going to use our state, right, which is api.data.map. Inside this map, we have to pass a arrow function. This arrow function takes two parameters or argument, you can say, which is the first one is data and second one is i for index. Now, what we have to do is we have to return something here. We have to return an HTML thing, which is our card. Now, what is going to be happen here is for every product, for every data, what we are doing, going to do is, sorry, just let me do it once again. So this particular data, whatever we are going to get, this component will render for third, each element for each time for each data, right? So just let me once create this thing and after that, I'm going to explain you everything, okay? Now, now what I have to do is I have to write something here, which is, so in SRC, what I have to put here is, let me show, let me see inside the API. So what we are getting here is, we are getting some brand category, description, discounted percentage, ID, and then what we're going to get is images. Okay, thumbnail. So I'm going to write this thumbnail here. So inside this data, we are going to get a thing called data dot thumbnail. So thumbnail has a path for this particular image, right? And for this title, we have something called data dot. We have something called data dot title. Okay. For description, we have data dot description here. So we are going to write it like this data dot description. Okay, so for that we are going to get the description. Again, next thing which we are going to see here, instead of creating an href or anchor tag, I'm going to create a button. Okay. And inside this button, I'm going to just write by. Okay. It's not going to work at first, we are, but we are going to just render some UI part. Okay, so I think everything is fine. And let's execute this. Now you can easily see, we have multiple cards, right? It's created. And this is the power of JavaScript. You can easily get the data from the API using use effect. Inside the use effect, you have to write Axios. In Axios, we are going to get write the data, or sorry, API. Through Axios, we are going to get the data, and then what we are going to get is, we, this is how we can render things easily. So I hope you understand that how you can use some hooks to add the functionality inside the React functional component and use that, use those things, right? So for that, till then, take care and have a nice day. See you in the next lecture. Hello, everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about what is conditional rendering in React. First of all, whenever we have to hide some data, suppose if I have to hide some data or show some data on behalf of some other values, so then we use conditional rendering, okay? So conditional rendering is a technique in React that allows developer to control what get rendered in the UI based on certain conditions. In other words, condition rendering allow developer to render different UI component or element based on some conditional or states, right? Suppose I have some condition on the, on the particular condition, I want to see some, I want to show some card to the user. 
or in some particular condition, I don't want to see that, uh, want to uh, show that card to user. So for that particular task, I'm going to use conditional rendering. Suppose, for example, let's say you have a login form in your React application and you only want to show the form when user is not logged in, right? So for that particular task, what we can do is we can create this kind of uh, code. So as you can see in here in the example, I've created a variable, right? It's is logged in, which is false. Suppose when the value of this particular variable is false, then we are using what? We are using ternary operator. I hope you have understood. You have understanding of that particular ternary operator what to do. But if not, then I'm going to show you something. Okay. Suppose uh, if I have uh, first understand what is ternary operator. Ternary operator works on a condition. After that condition, they have to write question mark and then column. So if condition returns true, if this condition, whatever condition I'm writing, here, if it evaluate and returns to, then this particular code will execute. Okay. And if this condition return false, then this line after that column, the right part of the column is going to execute. So this is the concept of ternary, right? So in conditional rendering in React, we generally use either ternary or this end operator. So in this particular case, in our end operator, what happens is if we have a condition here, if this condition returns true, then this particular part will execute, okay? If condition is false, then this part is not going to execute, okay? So these are two things which we use, generally we use to perform conditional rendering, okay? Uh, while doing some implementation, we are going to understand all those concepts. Okay, so here what we are using, we are using ternary operator. So the value current value of login is false. So if this value is false, then what component is going to be load is login form. Otherwise, if this uh, if I change this value to true, then what component or what things we are going to say is welcome back user, right? So these are some concept due to through which we can uh, do what we can perform some conditional rendering. What to show to the user or not to hide from the user, right? So I hope you understand the concept of conditional rendering in React. And this is for uh, today's lecture. Till then, take care and have a nice day. Hello, everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to move a step towards our second part, which is knowing what is the things which we are going to implement, right? So in this session, we are going to get to know what is ChatGPT, how to use ChatGPT API, where to get API key and API structure, what kind of API structure we have to form to get the API, right? So if I talk about what is ChatGPT, let's find it out. So here we are here in the ChatGPT app web app, which is created by OpenAI. If I write, what is ChatGPT? Let's see what kind of response we are going to get. And if I ask what is ChatGPT, then you are going to get I'm a ChatGPT, a large language model developed by OpenAI. I'm based on the ChatGPT, the native pre trained transformer architecture, trained on a massive amount of data to generate human like response text-based input. My purpose is to provide conversation support and assistance to user across a wide range of topics and domain. So but concept, I hope you understand that what is ChatGPT, right? It's a full form of, suppose if you have to talk with it, well, if you want to talk with ChatGPT, let's say uh, if I write hello and see what kind of response we are getting. Right? So the main reason for creating ChatGPT is to uh, that the AI model been able to give a response, which is like human-based response, right, in form of text. As I asked, as I say, or as I write, hello, then the ChatGPT answered me as, hello, how can I assist you today, right? So these are the things which we can use, okay? So we are going to create this kind of interface using our own 
text for our own code. There we are going to discuss about, we are going to ask some question to our project, in our project like this, right? If I write hello here, after some time, we are going to get some response, a similar response, right? So this is our project which we are going to implement. And now let's move towards some coding part which we have to create it, okay? So till then, take care and have a nice day. See you in the next lecture. So hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss that where from where we are going to get the API, right? So generally we have to do some, we have to come here on the OpenAI platform, click on the API reference. And in API re reference, we have the things that how we can use it through the uh, React program. Similar kind of thing is that either we can use it with Node.js as well as React, right? So you just need to do npm install open right there are several ways to do it but we are going to do it with another way we are just going to directly hit the api through axios and get the data from it so for particular thing we are going to use this api which is used to do used for chat kind of thing right so we are going to use this api for this api using this api we have to send some data so in header, we have to send content type application slash JSON. In authorization, we have to send open AI key, right? So uh, in next lecture, we are going to discuss that from where you are going to get this key, okay? And in after that particular thing, we have to send the dot uh, model, and then we have to send a message. What kind of message we have to send, okay? So suppose uh, we have to create this kind of uh, structure or a uh, we have to write the code in that way that whatever we are writing in the input box, right? Whatever I'm going to write here, it's going to be put over here, okay? And then we hit this API and so whatever we are going to get is, we are going to get this kind of data, okay? There, there are some details about the platforms or the model which we are using and we are going to get a message right here. So uh, in this example, what is going to be happening here? Uh, they have written that say this is a test okay so when you tell okay suppose let me test it with our model or which we have created here if i write here say this is a test and if i hit enter its response is this is a test okay so we are going to use this uh this api and we are going to get our response here like this okay so see you in the next lecture where we are going to discuss that how to get your open ai key and after that lecture we are going to discuss that how to implement whatever we have learned till that in react so see you in next lecture till then take care and have a nice day hello everyone so in this lecture we are going to discuss that how and from where you are going to get the api key okay so first of all to get the api key you have to create your account on the open AI platform, right? So I'm going to give you this link. When you access this link, you have to create your account either by doing sign up, okay? Or you can easily log in using Google, okay? Now, after that, you have to click on here on the personal. When you click on the personal, you are going to get an option, which is view API key. When you click here, you are going to get your key. Either it is created or you have to create another one. So to create another one, you just have to create key, click here and another key will generate it to you. You have to copy that key and you have to put here, either save somewhere else, right? Because we are going to have this key. I'm using a key here, right? This kind of key, you will get it. You have to pass here. You have to put this key here because we have to send this key when we, when we are going to hit that particular open AI API for the conversation right so you need those particular API key, okay so i hope you understand that what how you are going to get this particular API key and from there i'm going to share this link with you in our article or somewhere else right so see you soon in the next lecture till then take care and have a nice day
Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we are going to merge everything, whatever we have learned from the first lecture to last lecture and going to create this kind of web app where you ask the question and ChatGPT will answer about your question, right? So for that, we are going to use React as you all know. So let's jump to the code section where we are going to discuss everything technical, okay? So what I have done is I have created first import, okay? of Axios. What is Axios? From Axios, we are going to fetch the API or hit the API, okay, and get the data. We have known that how to use this, right? Okay, and for particular, uh, suppose if you have to import or you are using third party libraries. So for that, you have to run npm i with that particular name of that third party library. Suppose if I don't have these node modules available, okay, Axios. So from where I'm going to get this, we I'm going to just open the terminal here, right? Okay, just wait a minute. I open it. Okay, so I'm just going to open a terminal, and here in this terminal, I'm going to write n p i space i n. I'm going to add axios, and when I hit enter, I'm going to get the package related to axios. After this, what, I'm, what I have to do is I have to just do import here, right? And the next thing I have imported is a React from the React as well as use state and use effect. So generally use effect is used to perform side effect and use state is to manage some states of that particular component, right? The third thing I have done here is I have imported a bar from the React loader Spinner. This is another uh, third party library which I have used. You have to do npm i this particular name. And from there, we are using bar. The reason is that using bar is that whenever we are making any API call, right, or I'm writing something here. And when I hit, but we need this kind of loader here to represent that we are fetching the data from the packet. Okay. So for that particular thing, we have using, we are using this loader. Okay, and next in a uh, upcoming video section, you are going to get that where we are using this part. So I have created this particular component chart. Sorry, chat, <laughs> because I'm using chart in my last project. That's why I'm spelling it, or I was pronouncing chat as a chart. Sorry for that. Okay, so this chat here, I've created a com callback or, 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 or function here, right? In this function, in this functional base component, I've created three states. First one is for new question, which I'm going to write, okay? Which is going to store the value, of whatever I'm writing. Next one is stored value, okay? These are the stored value means we are going to get, okay? Whatever we are going to get from the API response, we are going to store here. And this is a loader, okay? So we are using this state for setting our loader as initially it's a false because we are not want to show that loader but whenever i write typing my question and when i hit enter right after this when i hit enter this function one function will call and set this loader to true okay now so for this as we know that we are going to use what we are going to use this particular api of open ai version one with Okay, so I have written the half of the API here. This was its base URL. The header is ready. What is header? Basically, whenever you have to execute or access or hit any API. So we have to send some data from our side that configure that tells that tells that server that this person is authorized. Okay. So for this, we are you sending this particular data, that content type, application session, and authorization key as a which we have to get from the uh, from that particular OpenAI platform, right? So you have to get this API, okay? Don't use mine because I'm going to disable after this lecture, okay? Now, the next one is that I've created another arrow, another arrow function, which I have assigned to this particular variable const, uh, sorry, ask GPT. Where I'm doing what? I'm getting the response, okay? Right now, we are using instance, post right what you say that uh, right so generally what we are doing is here we are creating an instance of axios 
So Axios is a library to fetch the data. Okay, so we have created an instance of this Axios. And from this instance, we are hitting the post method. Okay, so what we are doing is we are executing that particular method or calling that particular API and sending some data payload here, which is first one is the model that which model we are going to use. And the next one is our message, which message will we are going to pass here, right? So we are sending as a user, we are sending a row user and we are passing the content, okay? And what is prompt here? The question arises. So our prompt is a argument which we are going to pass whenever we are going to call this particular function, okay? Now, after that, what we are doing is we are just consoling the whatever the output we are getting from the chat GPT and returning that message as a result of this function, right? Now, after that, what we are doing is we have created a handle submit. This method, uh, sorry, this function is created because we are going to set a loader to true and call for our response, right? So we are going to hit this API whenever we, whenever the user hit submit or hit enter after writing its question, then whatever what this function is going to be executed, right? When you see the estimate part, you are going to understand it and everything easily, right? So this thing will be executed, this will be executed and going to return us a response. And we are going to get this response. We are going to set this response into our stored value using set stored values, right? Set a function. And after that, what we are doing is we are going to set our loader to false. So our loader will, yeah, you can able to see the loader, right? And we are going to set our new question to empty. So these are some functionality which we are creating. Similar way, we are writing this function also inter handle, right? So inter handle means whenever I'm writing here something. So instead of write, instead of hitting this or pressing this button, I can call that particular function by hitting enter only. Okay. And how I'm going to get this, you are going to see it or understand it in a while, right? So these are some functions which we have to create for the working of this, our output or our application. And here is our HTML part where we have used some predefined classes. And here uh, the question arises how you are going to, how you are going to create classes, right? Predefined classes, not instead we are not using, we are some, using some predefined classes like row and container uh, and other are some user defined classes. So where we have created, so we have created and written it here in the app.css file, right? Either here or where we have written. Okay, I, we have written here in the. Uh, wait a minute. I'm really confused where I've written all those things. Uh -oh. Where we have written these things? Let me check. Uh -oh. Okay, I got some confusions here. Okay. So we have created another file, which is known as styles.css, okay? So here we have written all our custom CSS, right? Okay, by default, if I write that particular code here in the app.css, it's also work, but let's say I've created another file, right? Now, the next thing is that after creating all those things, what we're doing is we have created some divs and different, different styles, what we need, and we have done the things. Now, as you know that we, as I told you that in above function, what we're doing is whatever the response we are getting, we are creating an object and store it in where in the set store values. So the set store values is a basically a user state. Okay. So we are using this user state to render the output of the, okay. So whatever we are getting from the API response, we are going to render using map. So we are using map here where we have created another component here. Now the question arises the, the, where this question, uh, question answer component is, right? So there are two different ways to create. Either I can create it over here in the folder, okay, component folder. But the second way is I have created this, 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 this particular part here below, right? Below that particular component. 
So because I don't need this component here anywhere else, right, in my project. So I've created it inside that particular components as a, again, arrow function, where we are passing two things, question and answer as a props, and we are getting that particular output, which we are seeing, right? Here is the logic you have, here, here's the logic where you are getting the answer like in form of continuous typing. It's look like that someone is typing, right? When I hit India, right? After some time of the uh, time, after some time we are getting a response from the chat GPT server. And you were going to see that whatever we are getting it here, it's look like that someone is typing, okay? It's look like someone is typing everything. For that particular thing, I have written this logic. You have to see this logic and understand that how it's work. We are using set timeout. Set timeout is a function or is a method which through which we can call that particular function after a particular given time. Okay, so I'm calling this again and again. And here we have given a use effect as a dependency, right? This means that whenever this value change, this function is going to execute. So you have to understand, you have to do some R&D on this particular code and you will understood each and everything easily, right? So here we have created this kind of code and now it's our time to see the output, which we have seen here, right? So whatever you write here, you hit enter or press here, you're going to see the output of this kind of. I hope you love the courses or the structure or the lectures which we have, which I have given to you. And this video will be helpful to you to create a best project for your resume. So if you like this course, please give us the best rating, whatever possible, right? As well as you can contact me through my LinkedIn if you have any doubt, right? I'm going to give you my link, LinkedIn link here, right? Not here after this lecture you will get okay so see you in next course where i'm going to create something new for you so till then take care and have a nice day